Hi guys, I'm James Bruce from makeuseof.com and in the course of writing these beginner guides for OpenHab, I've had a chance to play with a lot of different smart home devices and I wanted to just talk briefly about my experiences with those and which of them work best with OpenHab, which tend to have problems. So first up is the Philips Hue series of bulbs and costs aside because they're about, what, $60, $70 per bulb? Assuming you have functional hardware, i.e. your bulbs are working with the Philips app anyway, then the binding will ensure that they can talk to them over the network with OpenHab really well, perfectly. Um, if you're using the mobile app, you also get a good indication of the color that they're currently on. So it, it has a little icon that shows you the actual color rather than just on or off. And that I found really neat. Unfortunately, you don't get it on the web interface, only on the mobile app, but it's an excellent integration. So if you can afford them, then uh, definitely recommend the Philips Hue bulbs to integrate with OpenHab. Then I added a Harmony Ultimate Remote and Hub, which is an infrared based uh, media center controller thing. It only works in one room, um, but it can control all of your media devices through infrared and, and any other device, in fact, which works over infrared. And again, the binding for OpenHab works pretty well. It does tend to be quite verbose. It sends a lot of errors to the output, but they don't seem to affect the functionality, which is kind of weird. It still works and it works well. Um, at the moment, I have a script which turns on my exercise activity every morning at 8 a.m. So then I can hear the, the TV come on and the Xbox boot up and I get a notification saying it's time to do some exercise. So that works really well as well. Finally, I bought a AOTech Z-Wave Z-Stick Generation 5, which plugs into the USB port on the Raspberry Pi and lets you control and read from Z-Wave sensors and devices. So to test this, I got a, again, a Gen 5 multi-sensor, which has temperature, humidity, uh, what else, motion, and, and something I forget, and one of these little plugs from Everspring. Now, bearing in mind this is my first time ever having used Z-Wave, setting up the network was pretty complicated. That's not really the fault of OpenHab, it was just, it's a pretty difficult process to go through. You have to pair everything with the stick by unplugging it and then plugging it back in and then OpenHab reads from that and it's kind of confusing. The binding for it works pretty well sometimes but there's been some random problems I just can't trace. It seems to, the, the plug for instance seems to die sometimes and I have to actually repair it with the device which means the items file changes because the, the node ID of the device changes, so you have to go and update everything. It's a bit of a ball ache. The advantage of using Z-Wave is that if you ever decide to use a different home automation controller that isn't OpenHab, then you leave your options open. There's a lot of other uh, Z-Wave controllers. For instance, the Samsung SmartThings will work with Z-Wave devices, so there's always that. So if you aren't fully committed to OpenHab, then I think Z-Wave would be a good, well-supported middle step. It's just that you might find a bit of annoying problems within OpenHab. So next I set up a Arduino and a WizWiki 7500, just some custom microcontrollers with very cheap sensors, um, humidity and temperature, that kind of thing, and they connect to the network and then they report in their sensor data using MQTT. And to get this working, you also need a separate MQTT server, or broker it's called, um, installed on the Raspberry Pi. But once you have that, it's pretty rock solid. And the great thing about doing it this way is that the MQTT is broadcast all over your network, so on your computer, you can debug it. Um, unlike having to debug everything from within OpenHab, you can first determine whether the MQTT messages are even going around the network by checking it out from the computer. And from there, you can then tie it into OpenHab very simply. And I've got to say, this is the most reliable integration I've seen yet. Basically because there isn't that much of a driver situation to deal with in OpenHab. It's just, it's a pretty dumb implementation really. It just works. Um, it also goes two ways, so you can send messages back from OpenHab over MQTT 
to the client on an Arduino or whatever, listening to it, and that will then control your relays or, or what have you. So you can get pretty complex with that. And I think moving forward, that's going to be my best option. Um, I've got another 10 Arduinos on the way and sensors which I'll be putting around the house along on its own, not Wi-Fi, on its own separate uh, network. So they will all talk to a single a machine back here and then they will relay their data. And I'm gonna do that not only because they're rock solid, but because it's super cheap. I mean, an Arduino board is $5 plus, you know, $5 worth of sensors, um, including a power supply as well, whatever, that, you know, $10, $20 total, as opposed to some of the, the Z-Wave kit or anything else that's commercial, which can cost $50 to $100 just for a single sensor. It's pretty crazy. Um, so that's definitely my choice, but I'm pretty tied to OpenHab now. If you aren't, then that might not be the best way because I, I don't know of any other uh, smart home hubs which tie into MQTT like that, so that might not be the best. So yeah, that's my thoughts on best things to integrate with OpenHab. Of course, there's a ton of other stuff out there which I haven't touched upon. Your experiences might vary with Z-Wave. You might have a fantastic experience or you might be plagued with frustration. But again, if you're gonna stick with OpenHab, I would strongly suggest you going down the custom uh, microcontroller route with your own sensors, just a really cheap sensor away that you can put all over the house. If you're not convinced on OpenHab, then stick to Z-Wave because your options will be more open uh, later on when you choose to move away from OpenHab. It's going to work with a lot more things. Thanks for watching. Head on over to makeuseof.com. Hit up the links in the comments where you can read my beginner guide to open a hab on Raspberry Pi, plus a follow-up guide that we'll be publishing soon, all about the specifics of getting Z-Wave working, graphing your data, working with MQTT, lots more tasty, advanced stuff for OpenHab. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.